Hey guys, it's Sarah from Sweet Scents from the Dollhouse. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. If you're returning Waxy, as always, welcome back. I always find these videos so weird to record, knowing full well that you're not going to see this video for a very, very, very long time. I'm doing another installment of the Dollhouse Relics, giving you a haul today, which I'm very excited about, um, for my new wax melt company. So this is the very first time I've purchased from Village Craft and Candle. They're located in St. Mary's, Ontario, which is about an hour and 20 minutes from my location. So I guess it would be the same amount of distance to travel um, that I do now. Instead, I travel from West Lauren to Michigan to pick up from North, or sorry, U.S. suppliers. I have found that the price for candle supplies in Canada is really, really, really high. But I, I'm, admittedly, I'm a very proud Canadian, and I I love the fact that I, doing a handmade Canadian company, I would love to be able to have Canadian suppliers. But honestly, you have to, you have to, you have to always do what's best for the bottom line. And so far, I prefer to order from the States because even with the exchange rate, it's 110% more affordable. But I thought I would take a chance on some of these products because it would be nice in the event that I run out of something at last minute. It'd be nice to know that there's somewhere close to home that I could just run out and pick it up if need be. So... I thought I would try some things out. Also, the shipping of wax gets quite expensive. I know once I'm finished making my proprietary blend, I'll be able to perhaps get better discounts on volume, and then paying the shipping won't be quite so painful. But right now, it's, it's costing a lot for me to ship it to Michigan. Um, from wherever it's coming from and then my receiving service charges me by weight so when I'm ordering 50 pounds times three they charge me every 10 pounds the price goes up so receiving this is getting very expensive um, I need to find the most affordable way to do it so I thought if I had a Canadian supplier just for the wax alone that would be heavenly so I'm going to haul from a couple Canadian suppliers and perhaps I will find some products that I can keep some of my business here in my own country. So the first thing that I purchased was Millennium Blend Soy Wax. This is the first time I've had wax come in these adorable little beads. It's, it's really neat, not quite as messy as the Golden Brand waxes I've tried so far or even the um, straight up coconut wax I've tried is very messy as well. So this says heat to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is a lot lower than my other waxes I've tried so far. Cool to 140 degrees, add liquid dye and fragrance, stir while cooling to 115 degrees Fahrenheit and pour. So this is 10 pounds. I paid $33 Canadian plus 13% um, for our provincial as well as our federal tax. And then on top of that, I paid for shipping. So for 10 pounds, that's very expensive. The wax that I buy in the United States, I get anywhere between 14 to 19 dollars every 10 pounds. So that's a substantial amount more double in in basically you know yes the argument could be had that you know you have to take into account the exchange but this is still more expensive even with the exchange um but that being said i did speak to the owner of village craft candle she was amazing she doesn't know that i'm doing this review on my channel um if she ever stumbles across it on YouTube, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your invitation to St. Mary's. She said to me, Sarah, um, you know, because I asked her, what's the best wax? This is what I'm doing. These are my thoughts. This is what I want to do. And she was amazing. She doesn't know me from a hole in the wall or what I'm trying to do, no nothing. She gave me amazing tips. 
She told me exactly what brands they carry, which ones she's had most success with, whether it was soy versus paraffin, candles versus wax melts. And then she said to me, email me when you're coming to St. Mary's. I want to make sure that I'm here on that day and I'll take you through the studio and show you all of her test samples that she's done recently. So like that invitation was amazing. Unfortunately, I just haven't had time to drive to St. Mary's. I'm, I'm going to take her up on that offer and I'm going to make plans with her in the very near future. But I didn't want to put off this haul or trying this Canadian product for any longer. So I placed an order, but I still, I still am very much looking forward to going out and meeting the staff at Village Craft in St. Mary's. <clears throat> oh, there's a naked baby coming in here. Gracie, oh. I'm um, unloading a bunch of chemicals. Can you please keep Ella out of here? Sorry guys, this isn't the kind of uh, unboxing I want Miss Ella Bella's help with, my two-year-old. So the next thing I purchased on this list, UV stabilizer. Oh my goodness. Okay, so initially when I did my first test run samples, I was like, I want my product to be as au naturel as possible. So I only experimented with one color my first round, which happened to be purple. And I had, I don't know, 20 times, one, two, times six, you know, at least maybe 120 samples, like all arranged neatly and I was packing them. This is going to Regina, Saskatchewan. This is going to California. This is going to the South. This is going here. This is going to North Carolina. You know, I was trying to pack it all up and make sure that everything was even Steven. And then I realized that some of the purple wax had lost its color from being in front of my bedroom window for one day like and I'm not talking you know hours upon hours upon hours it was just near natural light for one day so um, I've come to the conclusion everyone and their brother has to use UV stabilizers like every company has to use this stuff because even the white wax the wax that I went oh natural and didn't put any dyes in it turned it nicotine yellow so as much as I was trying to avoid using UV stabilizer or all of these weird additives, sometimes you have no choice unless you want your wax to look like nicotine. Disgusting. So anyhow, this is designed to preserve the quality of color in your candles. Recommended usage, add one half tablespoon per pound of wax. And it's neat because she puts her website as well as her contact number right on there. There's only two little baggies in there. I thought I ordered three of those. Another nice thing about this vendor is she does include a packing slip. Huh, there it is. She scratched out three, put two, and refund to credit card. Interesting, because I seen this refund come to my account this morning and I thought it might have been like a shipping overage so good to know that that's what it was <clears throat> and again I know I've talked on my channel in previous hauls about trying to do this as au naturel as possible <clears throat> the wax that I've experimented with thus far is very 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 soft and you get that a lot with soy products right Sorry guys, Miss Ella is just totally out of sorts today. So the wax that I've been working with so far, especially soy, is wicked, wicked, wicked soft. Um, the first combination I came up with was almost like scoopable tart wax, which I'm like, hey, this might not be all that bad, but I don't want my main product line to be scoopable tart wax. I would like to have regular clams or souffle cups and then perhaps at a later date or even at my launch offer a scoopables version but just a shorter scent list. I don't know. I'm going to get into all of that at a later date. But my wax hardens. It comes out of the souffle cups nicely after several screw ups and attempts and adjusting my ratios, I finally got my wax to a nice hard consistency where it 
pops out of the souffle cups conveniently, stays solid. But then I thought, holy shit, Batman, I'll only be able to ship this stuff in the winter. Like, what am I going to do? Close up shop in the summertime? Because my soy wax would literally melt in transit. So I purchased Viber 103, one pound of it, which was $12.00. Designed to improve scent throw, increases hardness and surface gloss, it blind, bleh, binds pigment and oil throughout the candle, and eliminates molting. I think that's another word for frosting. Recommended usage is one teaspoon per pound of wax. So that's not going to last very long, but again, I'm still in the testing phases to make sure that my wax is absolutely perfect before my launch. I want to make sure my wax is perfect before I even make the announcements and start the relic videos. So this is just a test run with Village Wax or oh, Village Craft and Candles Viber. <clears throat> Keep in mind, folks, if you are considering doing this and you have small kids, it is imperative to keep this stuff away from your kids. You don't want this anywhere where children, animals, even stupid full-grown adults could get into this stuff and potentially hurt themselves. So if you're considering making your own wax melts or candles, make sure that you have an allotted space that is just yours, your workspace. Claim your space, make sure everything's up high and out of reach of nosy busybodies. The next thing I ordered is vegetable steric. This is designed to improve the burn time and opaque appearance. Uh, the ingredients consist of Malaysian palm derivative. The recommended usage is two to nine tablespoons per pound of wax. Holy moly, two to nine tablespoons per pound. That's a lot. I'm sure this information was available on the website and an oversight on my behalf I don't know that I would have bought that because it was $12 for this pound of it and if you have to use nine tablespoons that's not going to last long at all you could get maybe three pounds of wax out of that uh, I'm going to try and use a lot less the next thing I ordered were Ziploc bags, 100 pack clear. These are three by fours, and I'm hoping that they are proper polypropylene. Um, feeling them, I think they are, but I think these are only two mils. It's really thin. And if you've been in the vendor wax game for a while, you can actually tell the quality of the and thickness of the polypropylene based on the crinkling in this video. <laughs> um, I will use these for test samples, but I will not order these again from this company just because they're not thick enough. In my opinion, I would want much thicker because um, I stand by it firmly that my wax is going to come in the best of the best of the best of the best. So if you ever order my product, you know that when it arrives, you won't have to repackage it or deal with half-assed packaging or worry about the wax losing its scent because I use cheap bags. The next thing I ordered was these cute little stickers. This is only a hundred of them because I wanted to see the quality of them. Um, so I got these for $2.99. They are made in Canada stickers. Um, I like them. I was hoping that they were going to be a bit bigger. I'm not going to stick made in Canada stickers on absolutely everything. I was thinking about, I might even get into designing my own little made in Canada label to put on the outside of the boxes, like the shipping um, packaging or whatever, just because, I don't know, I think it's important to me, right? I like that idea. I don't know. You guys might think it's super cheesy, but 
that's my thoughts. Maybe not on every clamshell or every loaf or whatever, but I'm thinking I might put something to do with Canada on the shipping container. So this has been a bit of a point of contention and the main reason that I order from American suppliers. So we went through how expensive the wax is. The next super expensive thing is the fragrance oils. So in Canada, it's five to seven dollars per ounce of fragrance oil, and you need an ounce per pound, per pound minimum, minimum, to have a decent quality wax tart. And I want a super scented wax tart, so I'm going to put in more than one ounce per pound, and that's crazy expensive. In the States, especially when you start buying in bulk, you can get an ounce of fragrance oil anywhere from $1.99 to $3. In Canada, it's $5 an ounce. No, very little, um, even in bulk purchase discount, it's, it's not much of a discount. So I think I will try a couple of the Village Craft fragrance oils, but mm, it might be nice to have a couple favorites in the event that I'm stuck and need something really quickly. But these four oils, that, that's $20 plus 13% tax. Like that's a lot of money. Do you know how much oils, test samples I could get in the States for that? Like a crazy amount. And I apologize because I don't have the scent notes on me. But the first one I ordered was Santa's Workshop. And it is nice that she prints the same information here. So the flash point is 190. It's recommended for both paraffin as well as soy. It's not suitable for gel candles and bath and body. It is suitable for. So this is skin safe. Also, if you're new to candle making, um, no fragrance oil is really skin safe at this concentration. When they say it's skin safe, they mean it's safe to put 3% or whatever the usage is, the ratio in however many milligrams of body butter and then apply it to the skin. So they're not at all claiming that you can pour this or use just this as perfume. You always have to put it in something. Um, Santa's workshop, I think it was supposed to smell like pipe tobacco. To me, out of the bottle, this smells like cheap incense and cherry. That's really not nice at all. The next one is cream and sugar. Um, safe for everything but gel candles or suitable for everything but gel candles. Ooh, that's nice. That's all it is, cream and sugar. It's a really sweet, milky scent. It reminds me of sugar milk without the caramel note. I really like this. Oh, that's nice. You could add this one to so many different scents. That's gorgeous. I like this one better than sugar milk. The next one I ordered is raspberry violet. That one's really pretty. Fruity floral. Out of the bottle, it's so hard to tell if it's like an authentic raspberry. It's pretty close though. Just because out of the bottle, it is, it's at its purest concentrated form. It's, it's really hard to, you kind of have to use your imagination because it's so strong. The next one I ordered is vanilla cream. That one's nice as well, but you can almost smell the alcohol content in there. It's so strong. Um, definitely, I would say cream and sugar is by far my favorite. And then these two would be my second. Santa's Workshop, I 
probably won't use that at all. Um, I might put it in a test cup on a Q-tip and see if perhaps at teeny tiny quantity after a couple days that whatever that ew cherry cough syrup note is, if that chills out and you get more of that smoky pipe smoke scent, I don't know. That's the thing is that you really shouldn't judge these straight out of the bottles because fragrance oils morphs, it changes, it matures, it, it blends into the wax and over time a lot of them get way better. I, out of all of the oils I've tried so far, I have never had one stay the same or get worse. They usually morph a little bit for the better or they turn out just downright awesome. So that's it, folks. Um, this order came to a subtotal of $102.92. I paid... Oh, I guess I just had to pay HST on this, which was $15.36. And Campar Ground shipping was $15.20. So for a grand total of $133.48 Canadian. I'm pretty impressed thus far. The packaging, everything arrived safely. Again, as I say, the owner was like, crazy, 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 super nice and welcoming and helpful. Um, I'm really looking forward to trying out these products and yeah, I will come back with a review and I'll let you know how it goes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.